So here we're going to take a look at a two queen system, the Nat Hive, and I have Nat right here to tell me all about it. Hi, I'd like to take a couple minutes to show you what we've done here and how it works. What we've essentially done is we've established a two queen system that you can manage without ever lifting another box. Boxes are too heavy to lift when you're my age, it becomes too difficult. Let me show you the way we did it. We have established a six frame queen chamber on both sides of the base unit. In order to access that queen chamber, we slide the two side roofs apart, which gives you exposure to six frames. The weight of the honey tower is supported by a central platform here. The six frames on each side can be easily slid out in order to do your Demery swarm prevention. And what that means is once your queen chamber becomes crowded, your queen and a large percentage of the worker bees will swarm for a new home. In order to prevent that swarming, you have to continuously give her empty frames to lay in. So what we do is, every seven to 14 days, somewhere in between there, we like to average about 10, we come into this queen chamber, remove two or three frames that would be full of brood. We go to our upper box, where the brood has already hatched out and we take a few frames out of the upper box and replace them back into the queen chamber so she continuously has empty cells to lay in. Now because of the honey tower being supported by the central platform, it makes it possible to take the frames that are underneath that platform and slide them out from underneath like this. Now one of the first problems with this type of situation where you need to have your frames movable, there's a propolis problem. Because of the fact we can't make bees stop propolizing, what we've done is we've come up with a way to prevent the bees from ever being able to get to the ends of the frames and stick them. The way we did that was to take our roof panels and cut channels into each side. These channels are the same side as the end tangs on your frames. And when you set this on top of your frames, it blocks off all space where bees can get inside and they simply can't get to it to propolize it. That way, once you remove this, these ends will always remain clean. You'll be able to still put two fingers back underneath the tower and pull them out freely. And they're actually sharing now, in colder areas, I'm from Delaware, we get cold winters. To winter over a queen, you require more than six frames. We've come up with a kit that's included with the hive, and it works like this. Once you've harvested all your honey and you're ready to go into winter mode, you remove your slide cover. I mean, you could set it aside. Because you could pull it out from here and you could put a migratory. Now we're going to take our honey tower and set it aside temporarily. We're going to remove the queen excluder. Now, in your kit, you're going to get two frames. These frames have the same channel cut into them that your slide roof had cut. You're going to take the two frames, one on each side, lay it over top of your frames inside your queen chamber. Then you're going to go back and get your box that you had in your honey tower. And place the box right back in place. This gives your queen chamber an additional 10 frames to win her over in. So now she's got 10 over 6, giving her 16 frames. You're going to do the same thing on the opposite side for the other queen. That's going to give you two boxes that butt with each other right in the center, creating a warmer wall. And in the winter time, as your bees cluster come up, you'll see that they cluster and gather closer to the center because they sense the warmth from each other.
And that's pretty much how we do it. Can you put the hive back in the center and show me the water drip rail that you've developed? There? Absolutely. So one of the concerns would be, can water run into the lower chamber? And you guys have solved that problem? Yes, what we did was, we knew that once we got three or four boxes tall with the honey tower, in a rainstorm, there's going to be quite an accumulation of water hitting the side wall of that tower. And there's only one place for it to go, is straight down. And as you can see, it's directly over top of the clean chamber. So in our slide roof, we installed a aluminum and vinyl weather strip. And when you slide your roof up tight, the weather strip seals that out. So now whatever water comes down, your honey tower runs all the way off and drips off. And you in have order these little to, toggles? Yes, in order to keep this in place where you want it, we gave you two thumb turns to turn up and lock that roof structure in place. Now when you buy one of these hives, Inside the kit, we give you everything you need to assemble. We give you all the nails that are required. We give you the weather stripping that's required, the thumb turns. Everything is inside the box. Where do you get one of these? You can get one of these at twoqueenhive.com, and that's twoqueen spelled T-W-O, hive.com. Nice. And I see you have a special at, uh, regularly. We're here at the EAS. This is our very first showing. We normally sell these online for $190. Here at the EAS show, we're offering them for $175. And you have a, an interest, <laughs> to say the least. It's the end of the show. We're very pleased. There's people has, lined up, and how many? We feel very satisfied that we've gotten confirmation, and we weren't sure when we came to show if people would like it. And we have almost completely sold out of everything we brought. We brought 20 up here, and I've only got two left sitting in the corner. Yeah, great. And I've got a few people here that are interested. So, Good for you. I think we're going home lighter. <laughs> so, Nat, congratulations to you and your partner, and thanks for the preview. Really appreciate it. Thank you.